Hi folks, Eric Fritz here with INE Technologies. This video is going to be covering the FLIR T1K series. That's our T1010 and 1020. They're our premium grade uh, resolution cameras. That's 1024 by 768 on board the camera. If you're using Ultramax, that's over 3 megapixels uh, resolution from the software. Uh, so these cameras are uh, the highest resolution, highest accuracy, and highest temp range of any of our cameras currently offered from FLIR. Here's the kit. Uh, this is our Pelican case. As we open it up, uh, we have the camera, uh, our full kit. Uh, on the right-hand side here is our battery charger. It's a two-bay charger. The camera will come with two charging cables, a spot for an extra lens. Uh, our, here's our two battery slots. Uh, you can always get an extra battery or two if you need, but it will come with two. Some of our documentation over here, uh, this is a little bit dated. It's an older camera, but uh, there's our Bluetooth headset and some video output cables. Uh, here's our camera. On the right-hand side is our hand strap for holding the camera. The left-hand side is our rotating optical block just to move up and down about 150 degrees just to make some of your inspections a little bit easier and keep the display in front of you. The bottom left-hand corner is your lamp. Uh, you can also turn a flash on in the settings menu. I will show you in a little bit. Our next menu over from there is our auto to manual scale adjustment, our level and span adjustment. Uh, and the next menu over from there is our stored images and uh, video files that we have on board the camera. Our next button over is the on off button. There's also a little LED indicator that will let you know that the camera is powering up. On the type top right hand corner, we have our escape key or a back button if I'm in menus need to back up. We have our joystick for selecting and maneuvering in, 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 <coughs> menus, excuse me, instead of using the touch screen. Uh, we have a P button, which is a programmable button. Uh, I'll go over that later. And then our button to switch between using our big display and using the eyepiece on the camera, depending on indoor, outdoor application, applications and glare that you might have. On the bottom of the camera is our battery. If we pinch these two in and pull the battery out, it'll take it'll, it'll pop right out. If you pop it back in, it'll actually make a click noise when it's fully in. On here, we have our uh, uh, mini HDMI connections to a monitor video output cable. That one actually in the top right corner is a uh, a charging port if you wanted to use the camera and charge it at the same time. It's the same connection on the back of your two-bay charger. Here's your PC data communication cable, which is USB on the other side. And then our SD card, which comes with the camera. We typically use SanDisk. Um, you don't want to have too big of an SD card on the camera either. If I flip the camera upside down, we have our, our big thermal lens, our light and digital cameras here. On the bottom, we have our tripod mount. If you're putting this on a tripod, on the uh, trigger finger, you're gonna have your image capture button. If you tap that one time, you'll have an autofocus capture. If you tap it and hold it for longer than about a second, it will capture an image or a video, depending on how you have that set up. The button above that is kind of a, uh, it's our zoom key. So you're gonna toggle that left and right, zooming in and out, in and out on the camera. That's just a digital zoom. Um, if I wanted to take this lens off, I'd press that button and spin it about 30, 40 degrees. It'll pop right out. If I put it back in the same way, it'll click when it's in properly. Then you have your little manual focus ring if you don't want to use autofocus on board the camera. Now that we have the camera booted up, on the top left-hand corner, we have our zoom so it says 1.0 right now. As I tap that, it will take us to two, four, and eight times zoom. If I want to bring it back down, I tap it one more time. I can also use that button just above the image capture button uh, on the face of the camera to zoom in at smaller increments. Um, on the next menu over to the right, you have your displayed temperature from the cursor in the center of the screen, Fahrenheit measurement, and your battery indicator uh, for the camera. On the left-hand side, we have our P buttons. There's four of these on the camera. Basically, they're programmable keys. So they're custom keys on board the camera. There's one on the top by the joystick. There's one on the side of the optical block by your laser point, and then two on the face of the screen. So if I actually take my finger here and, uh, and push it right on that button, it's gonna make a full sweep and give us a menu of all the different things that we can select those buttons as. 
Common ones might be switching temperature range from low end to high end instead of having to go into menus uh, to, to select that, that menu. I can go in and go from single shot to video. I can choose between color palettes. Um, on the right hand side, I have our temperature scale. Right now I got 65 up to 73. That's an auto level and span. So as I put something in front of the screen, you'll see that that temperature is jumping around. I can also make that go to a manual using another button. Um, on the bottom left-hand corner, we mentioned our lamp. That's just gonna brighten up our digital image on the camera. Uh, our next menu over is gonna be our auto to manual uh, tuning capability. So it's basically gonna allow us to do a one-touch level and span on the screen. So if I wanna tap a point of interest, it will automatically set the level and span for me. Otherwise, I can use the dial on the right-hand side or select the bottom and end manually. Uh, I'm gonna tap that back to go to auto focus or auto level and span. The next menu over is our digital images uh, or our video files on the screen. If I slide the menu down on the top, just like a smartphone, you'll have your, your uh, battery indicator, storage capa capacity, uh, camera orientation based on when you turn the camera, and then Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Wi-Fi is there for importing images into software or to a laptop um, or to one of our apps, Flir Tools, for example, on a phone or tablet. Bluetooth is for meter link, and that is if you wanted to add a voltage or an amperage draw to an image itself. Um, uh, and again, that's using one of our clamp meters or multimeters. Down at the bottom is our, uh, our brightness for the screen. We can slide uh, left and right. I slide that menu up, and you see these little dots on the bottom of the screen. That's going to bring up our sub menus. We can use that with our uh, touch screen or we can use that with a joystick. So I can select the joystick and that's what I'm gonna use for this. On the left-hand side is how we're recording. So if we're gonna do single shot image mode or video. Video, for example, we have two different kinds of video. MPEG, just a home movie in infrared and then also radio metric capable video. And I'll show you how to select that later on. But basically what that allows you to do is record an infrared video and extract live temperature data images out of that file. Uh, and again, if you have questions on that, we can discuss that offline. Then we have our time-lapse uh, recording mode. On the next menu over, we have our measurement parameters. These are all different parameters that will affect your measurement on the camera. Um, there's some, some different ones here that we can select. Emissivity, for example, is how well a surface, e surface emits infrared radiation. It's going to be defaulted to 0.95. That's an important piece of information. If you have questions on what that is, or what any of these are, uh, we can take those offline uh, if, you have, uh, if you'd like to discuss some of those things. So distance, object distance, basically uh, just based on how far the, the target is away. And then we have our IR external window compensation. This is an important thing if you're looking through MCC buckets, switch gear, things like that. If I am looking through a window, uh, I can select on. And this is basically here so that you can compensate for loss on a window. When you look through an optic, there is a certain loss of your transmission rate. So we would go in and select anything from say 55 to about 70, depending on the camera or the window that we're using. Uh, again, it's kind of dependent on the window. So that's another thing that we can take offline if you have questions. Next menu over is our image modes. Thermal MSX is uh, multi-spectral dynamic imaging. It's basically overlaying the digital camera with the thermal image, giving you visual details. Lots of applications where that's handy. Our thermal menu, picture in picture, is a really good one to use if you have very little thermal contrast on the screen. And it shows us the digital on the outside, thermal in the center, and then our digital camera. Our images are stored in both thermal and in uh, digital from the get-go. Uh, we have our measurements. So we have uh, a center spot right now, and there's no measurements, clears the screen. All you're seeing is thermal contrast, our center button. And this is actually going to show us the, the temperature measurement in the top left corner. This one I selected is a hotspot box. So right now it's jumping to the hottest thing in this rectangle. And I can resize that if I'd like to. Uh, we can also do that with a cold spot measurement. So if I toggle over, it's going to show us the coldest thing in that box. We actually can do both hot and cold. We can do average. Uh, we can have markers on there if we'd like. These next two on the right are user presets. So if I hold that button down, it'll give me the option to add boxes or spots or uh, circles or several spots, for example, if I wanted to. So if I go back in and add another one, I can slide that over on the screen. Now you're gonna see that there's two menus, or two, two cursors, excuse me. 
If I add another one, now I have a third one. We're gonna have three measurements in the top left corner of the screen and I can save that. That's just a preset um, on, within our menus there. If I go back to the hotspot menu, if I tap the box and hold the center down, I have another set of menus down on the bottom. On the left-hand side is our trash folder. Our next menu over allows us to resize and move the box. A little bell would be our third menu. That's an alarm capability. This actually allows us to do that hot and cold and average uh, display in the box itself. And there's also local parameters in the box if I wanted to set uh, specific parameters inside the box. So if I actually toggle over to that local parameters, if I were to select that, I could set a specific emissivity in that box. If I go over here to our alarm, what we can do here is if I wanted to know if something was above a certain temperature measurement, I could say above, and then I would go over and slide to the temperature portion and say, hey, I want to be notified when this temperature exceeds 80 degrees or 85 degrees or 150, whatever it might be. It will do nothing on the camera until that temperature exceeds that threshold, and we can set whether we want it to beep or flash on the screen so that it kind of automates uh, some of the, the hot spot detection that you're looking for. Um, if I get back into my menus and toggle one more to the right, we have our color palettes. There's a handful of them on here. There's even more in the software. Uh, so we have iron, rainbow, rainbow high contrast has a lot more colors in there. There's a you know, similar grayscale, white hot or black hot, um, Arctic, and those are really up to the thermographer themselves. Um, you know, a lot of guys will use grayscale because it visually helps them see de uh, differences easier, but they may use something like this high contrast for a report for a customer or management just to show them a lot of color. Uh, as I go down here, we have another one that's called above alarm, and this allows us to do something similar to what we were doing before in the hotspot box, except it's based on the temperature, uh, excuse me, the color on the screen. So I can actually adjust, if you see in the top right-hand corner, it's a 71.4. If I slide that up or down, it will only show me things above a certain threshold. So if I see something over 75.4 degrees, it will show up red. Everything else will be white and black. Uh, we can do the same if we get back into those pallets, we can do it below a certain alarm. We can do an interval alarm between say 32 and 62 or 50 and 60. And we also have condensation and insulation alarms that you can use as well. I'm gonna slide back over to iron. And then our next menu over, if I tap the screen, will be our settings menu. And that I will go over in a later portion of the video. If you ever find yourself needing to do a nuke of the camera or an instantaneous calibration, if you hit the image folder down in the bottom center of the screen and you hold it down for longer than a second, it will act instantaneously calibrate the camera. Getting into our settings menu, the top menu will be our connections. That's going to be Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Uh, our Wi-Fi connection is for importing images to a phone or a tablet or even our PC. We can also remote can remote remotely control the camera from a... Uh, uh, another device. Our shared settings is basically where, how it's going to show up in our Wi-Fi network. So it'll be FLIR underscore and then that number, the password is down below that. That's what you're going to enter, connect to it. You don't, don't, do not need a physical internet connection to do this. Uh, if I back out of here, we have our, uh, our Bluetooth menu. That's to communicate with our multimeters and clamp meters. If I wanted to add an amperage or a voltage draw to the camera itself, we just select Bluetooth that should show up in your Bluetooth devices. Our next menu down is camera temperature range. That's a common uh, selection for our programmable buttons. If you need to jump from the low end temp to a high end or a medium level temperature range, we can do that. On our T1020, we have this 36, 32 Fahrenheit high temp uh, range. Our 1010 is a little bit lower than that. Um, if I back out of this menu, our next menu down is going to be save options and storage. On the new cameras, we have our inspection route capability, which I do not have on this camera, but our save button half to press is basically if I want to autofocus, I tap that image capture button about halfway and it will autofocus the camera. We have preview image before saving. If you have that off, it will automatically save the image when you capture it. If you have it on, it will require you to look at the image before it actually stores our next one is to add a notation after you capture an image. These are really nice for organizing data points, uh, documenting trouble, uh, trouble spots, things that you find in the field, whether it's sketching it, 
adding a note, adding a voice annotation, which would be done with a headset on these cameras, a Bluetooth headset, uh, and that'll store with the image itself. Our next one down is our image resolution. The camera will come normal. I mentioned Ultramax early on in the video. What Ultramax is, is it stores 15 to 20 images as you capture the button uh, on the camera one time. Basically, every thermographer moves the camera a slight amount, and when it does that, it'll take 15 to 20 images and all the pixels from them and overlay them to enhance the quality and the pixel count on the image from the software. Um, so that's something specific to FLIR. Our video compression menu down below that is what I was talking about with radiometric video recording. So our MPEG is nothing more than a home movie. Our radiometric storage is the temperature data radiometric images that can be pulled from the video files. You can save the photo as a separate JPEG. Right now they store them with the thermal image. Um, the next menu down is our digital camera. You can turn that off if for some reason you did not want a digital camera or digital image on. I recommend leaving that on. You can adjust your file format and delete all of your saved files, which I would not recommend doing. Uh, backing out of this menu, our next one down is device settings. That's our language time measurement units, all of those different things. Uh, be careful adjusting your language. Um, if you don't know how to read other languages, that's going to be a problem if you change your, uh, your language on there. From uh, temperature measurements to measurement units, you can adjust feet to Fahrenheit, Celsius, uh, Celsius from Fahrenheit, um, feet to uh, meters, and then you can adjust your time and date format, how you're showing up on the screen here for your reporting capability, and then also your time zones as well. Continuous autofocus, if we have that on, it will automatically focus the camera uh, as the, the thermographer moves it around. The problem with that is if you don't if you have that on, you, it, you, it'll basically override your manual attempts to focus the camera. So you want to select that on and off if you can. Um, display settings, we talked about some of these. Screen rotation, um, your brightness, your viewfinder brightness. If I go into overlay uh, information, this is basically some of the data that will actually show up on screen while you're inspecting things. Uh, you can select those as needed. Um, our viewfinder brightness, that's if we select from the display here to our eyepiece on the T1020, not available on the T1010. And then we have an HDMI connection if we were connected to a video output. Geolocation will be stored if we select this menu. Our lamp and laser we can turn on and off or disable. Um, I have an auto power off option on here. Uh, I do not have that on. I'm going to set that to five minutes. That's just to make sure that the battery doesn't die on you by running non-stop. Um, and then our user interface options, some of these are actually quite nice. Um, right now we have our emissivity mode manually selected, or you can go based on the materials of the target that you're looking at. Screening mode is for body temperature screening. Um, that's something we've had very popular over the last few years for the COVID pandemic as far back as SARS for screening uh, elevated body temperatures. Our next menu up there, we have some manual adjustments for the level and span. And then as I back up, manual adjustment for one touch level and span. So if that's on, that allows us to tap the screen and manually adjust the level and span. Our reset options, I'd be careful with this menu. Um, if you have issues with the camera, some, someone at the tech support uh, level may recommend resetting the camera. Um, but if you do that, you lose your data. Camera information, your model number, serial numbers, lens degree you're using, the lens um, battery, battery life, for example, your latest calibrations, uh, firmware updates, all of those different things are going to be on that menu as well. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions on the material covered today, please don't hesitate to reach out in the comments section below or visit our website at ietechnologiesllc.com. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like or subscribe to our channel. Thank you again.